Hello, hello. Welcome to Rise Above with Tammy Lynn. I'm Tammy Lynn, and I'm honored to have this opportunity to speak into your life, to empower and encourage you to continue running your race, fighting that good fight of faith, and finishing strong in Jesus' name. For weeks now, I have been hearing the sound of chains breaking. For weeks now, the Lord has said that he is breaking the chains off of his people. For months, he has said that it is homecoming season for the prodigals. Hallelujah. People of God, I'm here to deliver a powerful word from the Lord, a prophetic word from the Lord, and tell you, those of you who have been standing in the gap for a loved one, a prodigal, a prodigal nephew, a prodigal niece, a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter, a prodigal, a prodigal um, parent, a prodigal sibling, a prodigal loved one, a prodigal spouse, I'm here to tell you that you are going to testify of chains breaking in Christ the breaker. Glory, hallelujah. The Lord is wanting you to know that he is bringing them to a place that they are miserable. He is not blessing what they've been doing. He is, his eyes have been upon them, but his hand has not been upon them because they've been living in sin. They've been living in rebellion, but he has allowed it for such a time and for such a time as this he is now putting his hand upon them he is creating pressure upon them he is bringing them to their knees they've been trying everything else to satisfy themselves they've been running from here to there they've been running to the drugs they've been running to the alcohol they've been running to wrong relationships they've been running to new careers they've been running after more money they've been running after bigger houses they've been running after fancier cars but the Lord wants you to know all of their running it has been in vain. It hasn't paid off. They're still miserable. He wants you to know. He wants to remind you that he is the God of all flesh and there's nothing too difficult for him. He knows that you was wondering if it was possible because it's taken a while because it looked like they weren't coming to their senses. But he wants you to know that he's about to catch their attention. He sure is. He wants you to know that he is about to intervene in their business. He sure is. He wants you to know that he is a Jeremiah 32 27 God. He he is the God of all flesh. He is the God of that prodigal. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing too difficult for him. Glory. Hallelujah. He has been showing me that these prodigals have just, they're miserable. They have been trying to fake people out and they've been trying to psych you out and make you think that they're doing good and life is all good and they're doing better without you and they're doing good on their own and they're doing good with someone else that everything is just good. <laughs> but the devil is a liar. The devil's been lying to them and the devil's been lying to you because the Lord says he knows that one that he created. And when that one lays their head down at night, they are miserable within their soul. <laughs> but he has allowed it. His eyes have been upon them. It, but his hand has been off of him. But now his hand is coming upon him because he's creating a pressure. He has put a demand on this time. He has put a demand on their humility. He has put a demand on their repentance. And he says he is going to have his way with them because he has heard your prayers. He has seen your tears and he is going to show you his faithfulness. He's going to remind you that he remembers you. He's going to remind you that there's nothing too difficult for him. He's going to remind you that he is a chain breaker. He's going to remind you that what he told you, he is faithful. He's going to remind you that he is not only a promise maker, but he is a promise keeper. Glory. Hallelujah. He has given me a few scriptures to share with you all as he has used these to show me what he has put in my spirit about these prodigals who've tried to make it look like all is well, that they're doing good, who has even tried to convince you that, you know what, God isn't real. They don't need God. But guess what? <laughs> they do need God and they're coming to their senses, okay? Because they're realizing that no drug, no alcohol, no, no relationship, no other job, not more money, not another house, not another car, nothing, nothing can satisfy them because only one thing can fully satisfy them and that is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Micah 2.13, Christ the breaker is breaking through this situation. He is breaking through and he is breaking chains. Glory, hallelujah. He took me to 2 Chronicles 7.14. We all know this, but this is what he showed me in the life of a prodigal now. This is some good stuff. Holy Spirit, speak. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. And my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face 
and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. So the Lord is saying the only way that prodigal is going to find freedom, is going to find peace, is going to find rest, is if they humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from their wicked ways, then he will hear from heaven. It's not because he don't know where they're at. Okay, it's not because his eyes haven't been upon them, but he just hasn't been forcing them. He has been allowing them some time to come to this point. And again, now, even though his hand has not been upon them, they've been trying to fake you out. They've been trying to fake people on Facebook out, making it look like God is doing all of this. Like they got it all together. Look at this new relationship, new car, new home, new career, more money. Look at me. Look at me. How I got it all together. together. But again, the Lord says the devil is a liar. The devil's been lying to them. The devil's been lying to you. They've been lying to you. They've been lying to everybody else. But again, the Lord knows the heart of a man. He knows that one. So again, his hand wasn't upon them. So I know you were thinking that God was blessing them. God was opening up doors for them. God was allowing them to move on without you and go into promotions and go into new relationships and enter into new marriages and get new jobs and make more money and all of this stuff. But again, people of God, the devil is a liar. He's been lying to them, lying to you. They've been lying. They've been lying to everybody because the Lord says his hand wasn't upon them. But now his hand is coming upon them and he's creating pressure and he is forcing them as he has put a demand on them to come to humility. So again, that which they are seeking peace and rest and true joy, because anybody can be happy for a moment. You get something new, you're happy for a moment. But a lot of us, we get that new thing and we're all excited about it. But two or three months later, we've lost that excitement about that thing. Because next thing you know, we're going to buy a new thing. We're not really we. we. <laughs> I don't put myself in it. I'm cool. But y'all know what I'm saying. And the Lord is saying that uh, uh that peace that they're wanting, that joy, that true joy that they're wanting, they're not going to find it in a new thing. They're not going to find it in that thing that he never ordained. They're not going to find it in that thing that he never told them was for them. They did that because they were running. They were running from God. They were just running. They were running from some stuff. They were running from their past. They were running from their pain. They was running from the truth. Just runners. But the Lord says he is catching their attention and he's bringing forth a divine intervention and they're not going to be running because his hand is upon them and he is forcing them to a place of humility. So in order for them to have what their soul really wants, what their soul really needs, they must humble themselves. They must pray. They must seek his face. They must turn from their wicked ways. They must turn from those wrong relationships. They must turn from those drugs. They must turn from those counterfeits. Come on, I know I'm helping somebody. They must turn. And then he will hear and he will heal them. Glory, hallelujah. And now let's go take a look at Luke 8, 26 through 33. We have talked about this before. He has given me this in a message um, before that I shared about the demon possessed man, but he's showing me something else. I love it. <laughs> I love fresh revelation. And this is a revelation that he's given me with in regards to where the prodigal is and uh, this chain breaking um performance that is about to occur <laughs> because God is going to perform. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. So let's take a look at, and again, this is Luke 8, starting in verse 26. As soon as they stepped ashore on the eastern side of the lake in the land of the Gerasenes, the disciples were confronted by a demon-possessed madman from a nearby town. Many times he had been put under guard and bound with chains, but the many demons inside him had repeatedly thrown him into convulsions, breaking his shackles and driving him out of the town into the countryside. He had been demonized for a long time and was living naked in the cemetery among the tombs. I'm going to stop right there because what the Lord was showing me with that is they are becoming 
so miserable. Like they, they have been living with chains around them. And again, I know that they've been trying to convince you and convince the world and convince Facebook and everybody they could possibly convince that they are just doing good and that life is great. But their souls are absolutely miserable and they are coming to a point that they can't stand it anymore. That even these chains, the Lord is using this pressure of I can't take this anymore. I can't can't stand this anymore. I can't fake this anymore. The Lord is using that pressure because he is going to use their willingness and his power to begin to break these chains off of them because they have been demon possessed. They have been held captive by the powers of darkness. They have been living in a place that they were never called to live. This man was not he was not born to go live in a cemetery, but because of these demons, he lived out in a cemetery. He lived in a place that was not for him. So we see Christ right here, Christ, he comes to the other side. They step ashore, okay? He got off a boat. He's getting in the boat and he's also getting off boat because he is getting into their business. He is going into that place where they don't belong. Do you hear me, people of God? So they can't stand it anymore. So when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and screamed, What are you doing here? You are Jesus, the son of the most high God. Jesus commanded, and Jesus didn't even respond to him. He just commanded the demons to come out of him. Because Jesus is on a mission. He, Christ the breaker, he is on a mission to break chains. He is serving the devil notice. <laughs> Do you hear me, people of God? So he's not playing right now. Just, just as much as you want this done, he wants it done too. And again, I know you haven't been able to understand why is it taking so long because there's a lot of factors and the Lord knows. He sees things that you don't know. And again, he's a gentle God. He's not going to force anybody to come to him, to come back to him. But he does lure because he has made himself very clear with the 99, that one that strayed away, he left the 99 because that one mattered. He had made it very clear, even with the parable of the lost coin. She had 10. She lost one. She didn't go hang out and focus on those other nine. She searched for that one because it mattered to her. You see it over, over, and again, how much it matters to the Lord when something precious is lost. So he has made himself very, very clear in this. And so, um, yes, again, he's just on a mission. So Jesus asked the man, what is your name? Mob. The demons answered. We are a mob, for there are many of us here in this man. We beg you, don't banish us into the abyss. A mob. So here the Lord is wanting you to know because again, you're like, why has this been taken some time? He has ha he's been having to deal with some things. He has been having to get to the root of some things. Things they have been running away from from for years. They have been running from mama issues, daddy issues, abandonment issues, rejection issues, trauma issues of, of the childhood. They have been running from that. And now, I mean, if they are especially like teens and older and things have happened in their childhood, they have been dealing with some stuff for a, a while. And as they have not only had that happen in a childhood, but as life has gone on, more and more stuff happens. And so more and more stuff just gets piled on that other stuff. So there is layers. So there's a mob of things. There's a lot of things. There's been layers that he has been having to deal with. And he knows how to deal with that individual. He knows how to get to the center of the heart of that individual. He knows how to break through that hardened heart. Hallelujah. Breakthrough is coming and he is breaking through those hard hearts, those stubborn hearts, those determined hearts, determined not to go back to God, determined not to go back to church, determined not to come back to you. He is bringing a breakthrough right into that heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. On the hillside nearby, there was a large herd of pigs and the demons pleaded with Jesus. Let us enter into the pigs. So Jesus ordered all the mob of demons to come out of the man and enter the pigs. The crazed herd of swine uh, stamped over the cliff into the lake and all of them drowned. 
So I always find this interesting because it's like, you know, they all they all come from the biz, and now they're pleading with him not to go to a biz. But Jesus is so cool how he does it. He's like, cool, you don't want to do that. I mean, he psyched him out. The, devil, the devil's been playing games. He's been deceptive. Jesus is about to pull a fast one on the devil. He sure is. He's bringing colossal feet into his camp. He sure is. Because right there, oh, they went over the cliff just like they wanted, and they drowned. Gone. Gone. The enemies you see today, you are about to see no more. Glory. Hallelujah. Then the next one he gave me is out of, uh, it's Acts. Oh, I love this one. We've talked about this before. This is Acts 12, um, 6 and 7. So this is where, uh, this was Peter's miraculous escape from prison. Hallelujah. And we know that obviously Peter was arrested and he was placed in prison. Well, there was a people in a home that was praying for Peter. And we know this and I've shared this uh, regarding marriage restorations like a few months ago in, in a video. An amazing revelation that um, the Lord had given me through this message that they are returning they're passing through the gate. They're returning. You're going to be shocked. Everybody's going to be shocked. <laughs> but there's a knock at the door in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. But he has taken me here to verse 6 and 7 where it says, The night before Herod planned to bring him to trial, he made sure that Peter was securely bound with two chains. Peter was sound asleep between two soldiers with additional guards stationed outside his cell door. I'm going to stop right there just for a moment. I mean, the enemy thought that he had them forever. He thought that there was no way that they were going to turn back to the right way of the Lord. He thought that he had won. But guess what? When all at once... An angel of the Lord appeared, filling his prison cell with a brilliant light. The angel struck Peter on the side to awaken him and said, Hurry up, let's go. Instantly, the chains fell off his wrist. I'm telling you, people of God, there is about to be a divine intervention. Hallelujah. An angel is about to stick them in the side. God is about to catch their attention. Glory. Hallelujah. And instantly, suddenly, they are going to come to their senses. The scales are going to fall from their eyes. They are going to humble themselves. They are going to repent. They are going to turn from their wicked ways. Glory hallelujah and God is going to heal them and in this healing this is going to be the first restoration that you see it is a restoration between them and God God is restoring their relationship back to him he's reconciling them back to him and then they're coming back to you and he's restoring their relationship with you mama he's restoring their relationship with you daddy he's restoring their relationship with you sister he's restoring their relationship with you brother he is restoring their relationship with you. Grandma, Grandpa, he's restoring their relationship with you. Auntie, Uncle, he is restoring their relationship with you. Kingdom wife, Kingdom husband, he is restoring their relationship with you. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. In an instant, chains fell off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Man, okay, we got a little bit more to go here, people of God. So let's go take a look at Acts 16. 26 man who you're gonna do it jesus and we give you all the praise honor and glory be glorified in this hallelujah it is time in jesus name Woo! Woo! thank you jesus okay acts 16 verse 26 let me fix my eyes on it here we go suddenly instantly suddenly a great earthquake shook the foundations of the prison. Hallelujah. All at once, every prison door flung open and the chains of all the pris prisoners came loose. Hallelujah, man, people of God. We got to go read this one again. This is some good stuff. Suddenly, everybody say suddenly, instantly, swiftly, hallelujah, a great earthquake shook the foundations of the prison. Suddenly, there is going to be a shaking in their life. 
suddenly their attention is going to be caught glory hallelujah suddenly right there in their spiritual prisons in their emotional prisons that they have been living in suddenly christ is going to come in and count have an encounter with them and suddenly all at once chains are going to be loosed hallelujah Chains are going to fall off. Hallelujah. And I like it because even as I just read all at once, it takes me back to Amos 9, 11 through 15. Glory. Hallelujah. He is saying, man, everything's going to start happening really fast. All at once. All at once. One blessing upon another blessing. One testimony upon another testimony. Hallelujah. Father God, let the testimonies come upon the earth. One after another. One testimony of a prodigal coming home after another. Glory. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, man, I am just hearing it. I am hearing him say it is going to be one testimony upon another, upon the earth, in the land of the living, that his people are going to come forth and testify, hallelujah, testify how he set them free, testify how their souls are restored, testify how their relationships are restored. Glory, hallelujah, thank you, Father God, hallelujah. One last scripture, people of God. Let's go take a look at Revelations 20. Hallelujah. God, you are just good. Woo. It is tense up in here. It is powerful up in here. Goodness gracious. Revelations 20. My goodness. This is like, this is where Satan is being bound. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. He has had your, your loved one bound, but guess what? There's a flipping of the script because the chains that he had upon them are about to come upon him. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Woo. Woo. I'm so excited. Okay, people of God, let me try to contain it so I can get this out for y'all. Revelations 20, verse 1. Then I saw a mighty angel descending from the heavenly realm holding a very heavy chain. <laughs> oh, come on, bring it. Hallelujah. And a key, the key of the deep. He seized the dragon, the ancient serpent known as the devil and Satan and bound him for a thousand years. The mighty angel threw him into the pit locked it and sealed it so that he could no longer deceive the nations until the thousand years were over. I'm telling you, people of God, God is flipping the script. He is breaking the chains off of your loved one. He is placing them on the enemy. And the enemy you see today, you are going to see no more. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for this word. I thank you, Father God, for the coming home of the prodigals. We lift up your holy name, Father God. Your mind name, your marvelous name, your glorious name. And we thank you, Father God, that you are a keeper of your word. We thank you, Father God, that you are bringing the prodigals back to you, that you are restoring them back to you, that you are restoring them back to their families. And we thank you, Father God, that in this encounter that they have with you, that Father God suddenly, in an instantly, not only are the chains going to fall off of them, but they're going to leave everything behind, Father God. They're going to pick up their cross and they're going to follow you, Father God. Glory, hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, for restoring their souls and setting them on fire for you. We thank you that they are going to hunger and thirst for you now, Father God. Glory, hallelujah. People of God, your testimony is coming forth. Your prodigal is coming home in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Woo. I almost feel like I want to keep going. I want to cry. I want to shout. I'm just feeling it. He's going to do it. I'm telling you, he is going to do it. He's a promise maker. He is a promise keeper. He says, when you pray my will, my will will be done. It is his will that the prodigal comes back. It is not his will that the one who went astray should perish. Glory, hallelujah. So he's had his eyes upon them. Now he's about to put his hand back upon them, people of God. So get ready, get ready, get ready. Because you are about to see the chains break. You're about to see the chains break off of them. You're about to get the phone call from them. You're about to get the text message from them. You're about to get the email from them. You're about to get the knock 
at the door. They're going to tell you they want to come home. Why? Because they've come to their senses. Glory, hallelujah. Because they have humbled themselves. They have turned to God. They have sought his face. They have repented of their sins. They have turned from their wicked ways. And God has heard their cry too. And he has healed them too. Glory, hallelujah. Total restoration, family. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree total restoration upon your homes, upon your families upon your marriages glory hallelujah family continue to stand firm on the word of god stay strong in faith and i will talk to you all soon shalom